I'm Katherine Nathanson. I'm a co-leader of the Cancer Control Program and the Abramson Cancer Center as well as being Chief Oncogenomics Physician and I'm Director of Genetics for the Basser Center for BRCA Research. In patients with BRCA mutations, we have several avenues of research and I'm just going to highlight two. Um, one is that we've been doing a lot of somatic sequencing, so that's sequencing of the tumors of patients with BRCA1 and 2 mutations. Um, I think that data are very important uh, for several reasons. One is because if we're going to think about combination therapies with PARP inhibitors, um, then we need to know what additional targets might be in the tumors and what additional genomic and genetic changes might be in BRCA1 and 2 associated tumors so that we can better design combination trials and therapeutics for patients with cancer. The other thing that's actually important about knowing what the somatic genetic changes are is that if we think about doing screening and we think about things like circulating DNA or, or circulating tumors, um, then you need to know what you have to that you're looking for. What are the common genetic changes in addition to BRCA1 and 2 mutations that might be present in the tumors that we could use as tools for screening? Um, and so um, there are various ways to think about screening, but if you, especially if you want to do just targeted screening, looking for certain genes and certain changes, because sometimes you get very little DNA, you can't do lots of screening, um, you need to know what changes you want to look for. And in order to do that, you have to profile the tumors. The other types of studies that we are also very interested in doing is doing what we call genotype phenotype studies. That is when you have a different type of BRCA1 or 2 mutation or the mutation is located in different places of the gene, does that genotype correlate to differential breast and ovarian cancer risk? And there's multiple ways that we can stratify the mutations to the, see if they're associated with differential risk of uh, breast and ovarian cancer. Um, and that's sort of another venue to try to see if we can personalize risk better by knowing someone's exact mutation rather than just saying it's all BRCA1 and all BRCA2. I think there are several different challenges. Um, you know, I, I, there are lots of issues. So I think the issues of patient identification. So just making sure that women are aware of BRCA1 and 2 as being high risk breast cancer susceptibility genes, go to get tested, inform their families, just getting the word out there. I mean, it's surprising in this day and age how many women are unaware of, of this. And I think that's outreach is a, a big issue. I think then once you identify patients with mutations, screening. Um, so we do a great job with breast cancer screening using breast MRI for high risk women. We don't obviously for ovarian cancer screening. That's why we use prophylactic oophorectomy. Are there ways that we can develop better screening modalities? I know there's a lot of interest in sort of prevention in general. So can we prevent tumors from developing? I think you know all of those kinds of things are important issues, but they're also important issues in terms of treatment. Are we going to, how are we going to better treat patients with not only uh, with better outcomes in terms of morbidity and mortality, but fewer side effects? Um, and I think we talked a lot about PARP inhibitors as being that, but they're not the magic bullet. Are we combination therapies going to work? How are we going to really improve outcomes for patients who have cancer?